Hey, in this video, I will cover footwear regulations in the United States. Right, so we start with safety shoes, then we move on to flammability requirements, labeling, children's footwear, California Prop 65, and finally the UPLR. All right, let's begin with safety shoes and work footwear. So the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, OSHA, some call it, requires that employers provide protective footwear to employees when working in areas that might present potential hazards and could lead to consequences such as the following. So essentially it's about work, um, work footwear that in certain environments must be protective to the extent that they can prevent certain injuries. And the type, well, depends on, on the environment. Now, in practice, what this can mean if you are manufacturing or importing protective footwear is that you need to comply with one or more ASTM or ANSI, A-N-S-I standard. And here are a few examples, okay? Now, the specific standards that apply can depend on the product type and the specific, well, the um, what sort of risks that the footwear in question should protect from. But this is, um, this is um, of course, crucial if, if, if you are importing and manufacturing safety footwear. Okay, now let's say that you don't. Well, you still have to consider, well, let's say you're not selling safety footwear, but other footwear, sneakers, etc. Well, you still have a long list of other compliance requirements to take into consideration, which is what I dedicate the remaining part of this video to. And first, we have flammability. So... The FFA or the Flammable Fabrics Act uh, covers certain types of footwear under 16 CFR Part 1610. Now, if this is footwear in the way that most of us define it can be debated, but they use this term and they do mention footwear that is made entirely or partially of hosiery, hosiery or attached to a piece of clothing. So I'm not sure entirely, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure when you will be in a situation when you have to take this, um, these flammability requirements into consideration. But essentially, if there is some sort of extension that is, is made up uh, of textiles, of fabrics, then uh, this can apply. Personally, I have not been working with uh, any client that has uh, encountered this as a requirement. But it's still there. Um, 16 CFR Part 1610 specifically mentions footwear and this definition. So yeah, you can look it up. Okay, then we have labeling requirements. So I'm not going to go into detail here because you can find a uh, well a very detailed guide on the FTC website and also compliancegate.com, which is using the same guide as as a source. But essentially, the FTC, they, they do provide um, guides when it comes to presenting leather and imitation leather, that's PU leather, for example. Okay, the, the certain terminology and so on, um, not misleading consumers about leather grades or leather qualities and so on. So take a look at that, uh, um, the FTC guide, and specifically, they are referencing 16 CFR Part 24. Other than that, um, you may also need to look at the Wool Products Labeling Act. Again, it's very niche, but in case you are selling uh, wool footwear, which is probably not that common, but uh, um, could still be relevant. And I think they actually mentioned footwear in the guide that is uh, presented on the FTC website. And if I remember correctly, it's threading your way through textiles, labeling requirements or something like that. And finally, we have country of origin, which is not specific to footwear, but essentially covers all consumer goods in the United States. And you need to accurately declare the, uh, the country of origin, which is usually where the product has been manufactured. So if you are importing from Mexico, then it's made in Mexico. If it's import from China, then it's made in China. Quite straightforward. Okay, then we have CPSIA or the Consumer Product Safety Initiative Act, and it covers all products 
define as children's products, which again is a definition that you can find on the CPSC website and Consumer Product Safety Commission website. But generally speaking, if your product, well, if your footwear uh, are marketed as, as children's footwear, and that can be in terms of presentation, it could be uh, in terms of the age group, which would be fairly obvious. And, and if the type of footwear is generally considered to be uh, sold as suitable for a certain age group, meaning uh, 12 years or younger, then the product is likely covered by CPSIA. Now, in practice, what this means is that you need to ensure compliance with the CPSIA rules and the ASTM standards. These rules and standards cover everything from uh, substance restrictions that can be, say, lead content, uh, restricting and banning certain phthalates, but also mechanical safety um, could be in terms of outer sole resistance. I'm just guessing on that one. But something I do know is that it does cover small parts and so on that, that, that could potentially be a risk. Other than that, you also need to issue a CPC or a children's product certificate. This in turn must be supported by a test report because you must mention the specific CPSA rules and the ASTM standards followed by product information, your company information, and also information about the testing company that has verified compliance, okay? You also need to make sure that the units are, um, that they carry a tracking label. A tracking label is essentially, it's a traceability label. Uh, you need to include product information as a product name, model, and also very importantly, a batch number and the purpose of this is to ensure that if there's ever an issue any safety issue your product can be recalled by identification of the specific batch as such it should be possible for the market surveillance authorities to pinpoint a specific batch of defective uh, footwear in this case and this means that you need a unique batch number for each batch that you start selling in the US. And again, as I was already mentioned, third party lab testing is mandatory. And you can't just go to any testing company as is required under the CPSAA. You need to, you need to have your products tested specifically by a uh, CPSC accepted testing company. Just Google that and you'll find a list. Doesn't mean that, the, that they have to be specifically tested in the United States, but uh, they must be on the list or the test is not recognized. Okay, then we have California Proposition 65, and um, this is a this is a regulation in, in, in California which essentially restricts uh, chemicals and heavy metals in consumer products sold in California. And it's not the only state level substance restriction or substance regulation. I don't know if well in, in on a state level in the United States, but it's often referred to as uh, well. It's, it's a more the one that's more well known. And why it's important to mention uh, California Proposition 65 is that it is not age group specific, okay? Previous regulation CPSA is age group specific, but California Proposition, Proposition 65 is not. So if you want to sell in California, you need to comply unless you want to use certain warning labels, but that's a different story. But in any case, what this regulation does is that it sets restrictions or so outright bans on chemicals and heavy metals. This covers lead, cadmium, ballots, other substances. In practice, you need to verify. You need to verify compliance through third party testing. In a perfect world, you just ask your supplier to provide a, a test report for all the different materials used to produce your shoe. That could be say the upper part would be leather or maybe some synthetic uh, uh, textile. And the lower would be say rubber or, or you know, something like that. Or, but in any case, the, the reality in the supply chain is that most footwear producers, especially outside the United States, they don't have substance data. They don't have chemical data. In other words, they don't know what, say, their leather actually contains. And this means that they don't have test reports, okay? They don't have test reports that can prove if these different materials are compliant with California Prop 65. This is not unique to California Prop 65. It's the same if you're dealing with REACH compliance in the EU or um, CPSIA, uh, the substance restrictions on the CPSIA. But the reason that third-party testing is needed is ultimately that there are 
real risks when it comes to materials used to produce footwear. What I'm referring to here is the likelihood of these materials containing restricted or banned substances above the set, set limits. Leather, as a result of the tanning process, could contain lead, mercury, chromium, and these are substances that are covered by California Prop 65, as far as I know. The same can be said about phthalates in, in plastic parts, possibly also in rubber, uh, and uh, also in coatings that can be applied. So what I'm getting to here is that given the fact that few suppliers can provide pre-existing test reports and relative risks, I would say medium high in, 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 in this context, it is therefore necessary to, to arrange third party testing in most cases, if you're manufacturing footwear outside the US. Right. Okay. Finally, we have UPLR. Now, UPLR, UPLR is, is, uh, is covered by the NIST handbook that's published on an annual basis. We, we have a, a video dedicated to the UPLR on the website, but in any case, you need to declare the product identity, the product name, uh, declaration uh, or responsibility that can be manufactured name and address and declaration of quantity in this case. I'm not entirely sure, but they may actually have something to say about size. But in any case, just go to the NIST website and download the NIST handbook for, well, whatever year you're watching this video. Um, they recently, at the time of recording, which is February 2023, they just published the latest one, the latest NIST handbook, and the latest UPLR guidelines is latest a month ago. Okay, so it's a very brief introduction to footwear. Uh, compliance in the United States. If you have questions, you can write them here on YouTube or go to compliancegate.com. Thank you.